Uh, one investor, though, has made the right call on solar. John Segrich runs the Gabelli SRI Green Fund and has been betting against solar stocks for some time. Uh, John, good to have you here on Street Smart. Thanks for having us. So let's talk about solar. Why? What is it that set you guys off and said, this is not an area I want to be a part of? Right. Basically, if you look at the fundamentals of solar, right, the economics still don't make sense. Right? So without government subsidizing the industry, you just can't make the economics work. Right? So demand is slowing down. Government subsidies are under pressure. You're seeing lots of issues in terms of budgets and debt contagion throughout mm -hmm. Europe. You know, Greece is an issue. Italy is a big market for solar. It's questionable whether that market is going to take off again, given everything that's happening there. So bottom line, not viable without essentially the subsidies not viable and a little without bit of help the governments, here. Right. And so in that environment, you're really going to be restricted to the market. And so you've got supply that's coming on very strong out of China, mm -hmm. really not stopping in any way and slowing down, um, because the Chinese can produce much lower than the Europeans or the Americans. And so so they're still adding to the supply problem as demand's not really growing. So the industry will continue to build itself into oversupply, and there's just not a market that can absorb the excess supply. So prices keep going down. So supply and demand, basically. It's supply here. and demand. And, and so, John, John, you're not just uh, avoiding this sector. You are short some of these stocks, actively shorting them. You think we could see 50 percent downside on some of these names. Which ones are the big losers? Yeah, you know, we think, you know, you're at a point today where cell manufacturers like J.A. Solar probably don't make money. Uh, companies like Renesola and LDK are going to struggle to make money uh, at the wafer level. So for us, what has to happen here is that the polysilicon makers, right, companies like Vakar Kemi or OCI in Korea, are at a point where their customers don't make any money. And so either their contracts are going to break or the customers are going to go out of business. And so our position really here is that the poly contracts will break. And that's really not the expected outcome. And so you can look at companies that make cells or wafers, and they're still probably really good shorts. But the best shorts, in our opinion, are going to be the polysilicon makers because the belief is those contracts will hold. We don't think so. And we don't think the bottom for the industry comes until the polysilicon price approaches cash cost. Today, polysilicon is about $50 a kilogram. It can go as low as 15 and companies can still make money. So there's a long way down. Hey, listen, let's just get to some of the stocks that you like. Polypore is one. PPO is the ticker. This stock is up almost 200% in the past year, yet you still say it's a buy. We do. Um, Polypore has got a great business. It's one of three companies in the world that makes a product <laughs> called a separator. Uh, the other one's owned by Exxon, and another one's Asahi Kasai in Japan. Basically, you use a separator in a battery, so it keeps the chemicals from mixing too fast or too slow. Right. And you need a high-quality one to make a good battery. They're used in car batteries, iPads, and we think they're going to be the separator of choice for electric vehicles. The street is just too low in terms of the earnings power in this company. They continually beat earnings every quarter. Mm. We still think earning estimates are going up. And we think the stock can get to $90 over the next 6 to 12 months. John, we need to have you back because you have other interesting names that have all had a great run and you still say they're by. i got to ask you, 20 seconds, sure. Sino Forest, you guys also, that's a top holding. It's down 80%. We know yeah. about uh, the stock and the concerns and the questions that have been raised about it. You still own it? Why? No, we don't own it anymore. You, you right? got rid of yeah, it. It's at a point where it's very difficult to make an investment decision. Um, the company's really not been very forthcoming in terms of a lot of information. So we exited the position. We'll reevaluate. All right. Listen, definitely come back because there's a lot Thanks of names lot. that I know that you guys are in and, and definitely interesting ones. John Segrich, thank you so much from Gabelli. Thank you.